on their project every month at naturesprototypes.com. And welcome in. USB is the ubiquitous interface. Phones, cameras, mice, keyboards, whatever. If you're sticking it into a computer these days, it's likely you're sticking it into a USB port. And open hardware is absolutely no exception. From the newest, you know, Kickstart fad to the latest Arduino, everything is using a USB interface on it. There we go. So what is a USB ID? When you plug a device into a computer, it sends two numbers to the computer and says, hey, it's me. Do you have any clue what to do with me? And the computer looks for a driver and figures out if it's a mouse or if it doesn't know what it is, it asks you to feed it some data, you know, feed it a driver. And that USB ID is two parts. The first part is the vendor ID, and that tells you who actually manufactured the hardware. So here we have 2341 in hex, that's 9,025 in people years, and that tells us we have an Arduino plugged in. The second part is the product ID, and this tells us what product from that manufacturer we're actually dealing with. In the case of Arduino, ID number one is the Arduino Uno. So USB IDs are handed out by an organization called the USB Implementers Forum. And it's a consortium of big technology companies like Intel that got together to form USB standards, but also to like, make rules about how we issue USB IDs and rules for the use of the USB logo. So for 2,000 bucks, you can get yourself a USB vendor ID, and it has 65,000 unique product IDs for whatever you want to build and use it for. Um, you can't use the USB logo, though. That's a whole other can of worms that costs more, so we're just going to stick with the cheapest option for today. Leet is already taken, we ask, and you can't get a custom vanity number unless you're a founding member, evidently. And the reason I'm up here today is because USB and open source don't jive very well together. You know, there, when you get your USB ID, you sign a contract and a license agreement that says you won't sublicense it, you won't share it, you won't resell it, whatever. And that spirit of not sharing doesn't really go well with open source. So what most open source hardware makers do is remove the ID from their firmware when they publish it, and you're responsible for getting your own. And this just isn't a theoretical problem, this is something we're dealing with today. Uh, last year, I believe there was a, a bit of a controversy when Arduino moved from the ubiquitous FT232 USB to serial converter chip to their own custom programmed USB to serial converter. Uh, there was some thought that you know this would lock other open source people out because now in order to use the new Arduino Uno design, you're going to have to cough up 2,000 bucks. So you, you make your latest thing, you base it on the Arduino, you're going to have to come up with $2,000 just to play in that arena, or you're going to have to fall back to the old technology. So 2000 bucks that's absolutely nothing to a big company. It's not even that much to a moderately well-funded startup. But how about hackerspaces? How about community groups in a forum that design some open hardware? How about a high school or a college class or a kitchen table startup where someone's trying to get their first 20 USB kits out the door? Now, they're going to have to drop $2,000 to get the ID, and that's prohibitive, especially if sometimes it costs you know, 10 to 100 times more than your actual startup costs. So the first thing people think is, you know, you get 65,000 of these things, why not sell a couple? Well, first, the USB Implementers Forum is very specific. It's completely against their license and they don't allow it, and you'll have to sign a contract to get an ID. But in the beginning, way back when they started, they handed them out no strings attached. I believe it was about $1,000 then, maybe 1500 You give them the money, they give you the ID to use as you want. So two Dutch web shops bought vendor IDs and started selling unique product IDs from their web shops for a couple bucks each to make it available to open hardware people and community people specifically. And despite the fact that there was absolutely no agreement in the place, and despite the fact that there was no law against reselling them, the USB forum harassed these web shops relentlessly and eventually revoked their ID and said, you know, you can't use this anymore, you're out of luck. One of them stopped, thinking it's not worth it to battle the USB forum over this. One of them is still selling them today with lots of warnings on their web page about how it's been revoked, but it's unlikely to be duplicated and blah, 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 blah. There's a tendency to think if we can just find the right loophole through this contract that we'll be able to sell IDs, MacGyver our way around it. But I think this is a policy problem. This is a political issue, not an engineering issue. 
So there's really not an engineering solution to it. Uh, a sort of gray area of USB IDs is to squat arrange. When the USB implementer's form takes away the Dutch IDs, the Dutch guys' IDs, or when, they, when a company goes bankrupt or an ID is abandoned, the implementer's form can't resell that because it's been tainted. Uh, people run the risk of getting duplicate numbers. So it's open source, excuse me, open source hardware can squat that range. They can pick a number in an abandoned range and start selling products with it. Uh, but it's not exactly professional, though you do see it a lot in cheap electronics. This is sort of the approach the Open Moco smartphone people took. This is uh, recent news. Maybe some of you have heard of this. Uh, the company dissolved, and they left their USB ID to the community. And now the community is issuing IDs and reserving them for open source licensed products on their wiki. Supposedly, there's no law to prevent this yet, but they don't have any authorization, any agreement with the implementers forum, and I would imagine the implementers forum would say, no, you technically shouldn't do that. Uh, this may be fine for testing and may be fine for open source projects, but it's not very professional. And if you dared to sell something with one of these, I'm sure the implementers forum would eventually come after you for it. When the Arduino Uno came out, uh, there was the controversy that you know, it now locked people out of doing open source with the latest hardware. And a common solution that was suggested was to use a chip like an FT232 from the old Arduino that already comes with a USB ID. And I think this solution is a fail for two reasons. And first, it relegates open hardware to like second class citizen status where you have to use a certain sort of thing to get your design done because of stupid political reasons. And second, uh, it puts us in, you know, it makes us rely on a black box with we don't know what's in it, we don't know what software was running, and that seems completely contrary to the idea of open hardware. There's one legit way to get an ID without shelling out 2,000 bucks, and that's to sub-license one from an authorized hardware uh, manufacturer. The USB implementers forum will let some hardware manufacturers issue IDs for use exclusively with their own manufactured silicon. There's not a loophole out there if you're thinking that. And microchip is one example. You can get a USB ID to use with their PIC microcontrollers, and that's good for your first run of 10,000 units. FTDI, the maker of the chip that was in the original Arduino, will give you a block of eight to use however you want as long as they're used in their chips. Now, I'm a geek, and I want to have engineering solutions to everything, but I'm afraid the potential solutions to the USB problem are all political or policy-related. Obviously, a relaxed resale policy and sublicensing policy would be the easiest way. Just let people sell some of those spare 65,000 IDs they have laying around that they're not using. Uh, a testing block with reserved IDs for standard. Taking the Arduino again, they use something called USB uh, CDC. It's a very general protocol that's used in hundreds, if not thousands, of devices. But despite that, despite the fact that they all use the same default driver included in your operating system, they all have unique USB IDs. And that's not necessary. You know, we could have an ID set aside for USB CDC. We could have IDs set aside for different standard protocols, which would increase the speed to market and decrease the cost. Uh, another thing would be to legitimize the open MoCo approach. Now, in the past, it's been web shops, hacker spaces, individuals trying to resell IDs. But maybe you know, an official open source hardware organization with lawyers and people in suits and an official face to them, maybe the implementers forum would be able to work with them uh, to make licenses, or sorry, to make IDs available to open license hardware. And finally, eventually this problem is going to take care of itself. They only have 65,000 vendor IDs that they can sell. Eventually they're going to run out of them. And then I think selling singles at a premium is going to be the first brilliant idea out of the marketing department. But I don't think open hardware should have to wait that long to use USB. Uh, so my goal today was not to provide a solution, but kind of let you know about the problem and tell you what people have tried in the past. And I hope maybe next year we're back here talking about some legit way for open hardware to use USB. Thank you very much. I'll give you a